Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ma ba'd Continuing on in our lecture regarding the conditions of the testimony of faith, the conditions of the shahada. We reached the point when we were talking and discussing about the third condition for the testimony of faith, which is acceptance. Acceptance of the meaning of the testimony of faith is one of the critical conditions and one's heart should be open to the Islamic concept of monotheism. Unfortunately, many people reject this concept even when they acknowledge that Islam is the truth. And this is exactly what the polytheists did during the time of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says in the Quran, Verily when it was said to them that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah, they became arrogant. The original pagans at the time of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, refused to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and affirmed the complete meaning of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's worship or uh, lordship, his right to be worshipped alone, and a, the knowledge of his divine names and attributes. They refused all of these things. And this is why they were astray, and thus prevented from entering the fold of Islam. This is a critical concept that we have to understand. That just because someone acknowledges the lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rububiya, as the Christians and Jews do, as you will even find many Hindus, if you ask them, you know, how many gods are there? They'll say one. However, to acknowledge that there is one God and that he is the Lord of everything alone is not sufficient. As that was not sufficient for entering the pagan Arabs into the fold of Islam. This is why the scholars have derived from the Quran and the Sunnah that acceptance is a condition of the testimony of faith. And that simply uttering la ilaha illallah upon the tongue is not sufficient to enter the fold of Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fi kitabihi al-kareem, it is not you whom they deny, but it is the verses of Allah that the oppressive sinners deny. So accepting the testimony of faith entails surrendering, surrendering oneself to Allah and His Lordship. This helps one to remain steadfast in the religion and aware that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all aware of what we do and that He alone can solve our problems. Acceptance of true monotheism negates the arrogance that the pagans possessed and this requires humbling oneself to the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the truth. Therefore, accepting, the, accepting this immense testimony in one's heart, acting upon it, pronouncing it, are all components of true faith. And as we mentioned before in the previous lecture, we mentioned that iman is comprised of three parts. And this is what Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah believes. This is according to the Qur'an and according to the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ and according to the statements of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ and what the Salaf al-Sari believe. As the Prophet ﷺ said, مِنْ رَأَ مِنْكُمْ مُنْكَرٍ فَلْيُغَيْرُهُ بِيَدْ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ فَبِيْ لِسَانِهِ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ فَبِيْ قَلْبِهِ وَذَلِكَ عَدَفُ الْإِمَانِ 
Ruahu Muslim. The Prophet Sallallahu said, as we mentioned before, that if one of you sees a munkar, then change it with his hands. And if he is unable to do so, then with his tongue. And if he is unable to do so, then with uh, their heart. And that's the weakest form of faith. So that shows us that faith has different levels. Faith has different components. It is comprised of the tongue. It is comprised of, uh, of, of what's contained in the heart. And it's comprised of what we do on our limbs. That's Iman in Islam. And that's why it's not sufficient to just utter the te testimony of faith when someone says, La ilaha illallah. That's not just, just that without believing in it, without these other conditions that we've mentioned and that we will mention, that's not sufficient. The pagans of Mecca accused the Prophet ﷺ of insanity and witchcraft, primarily because they were arrogant and refused to accept the truth, as we were, were affirming that acceptance is a part of the conditions. So their arrogance pushed them to refuse and accept the truth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about them, إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا إِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ لَا إِلَهِ لَلَّهِ يَسْتَقْبِرُونَ وَيُقُولُونَ أَإِنَّا لَتَارِكُوا أَلِهَاتِنَا لَشَاعِرُ مَجْنُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Truly, when it was said to them, none has the right to be worshipped but Allah, they puffed themselves up with pride. And they said, are we going to abandon our gods for the sake of a mad poet? The pagans and polytheists rejected the message of Islam and the blessed testimony of faith that enters one into the fold of Islam. And this illustrates that the lack of acceptance of the testimony of faith is open disbelief, especially if it is done out of arrogance and clear rejection of the truth. Sheikh Salih bin Fosan said, uh, regarding the above verse that we mentioned, this is similar to the condition of those who worship graves today. As they say, there is no God worthy of worship except Allah, but yet they continue in worship in the graves, and they do not accept the true meaning of there is no God worthy of worship except Allah. La ilaha illallah. Lessons of this condition. Some of the important lessons of this condition of the testimony of faith. Number one, acceptance negates rejection. And number two, arrogance and false pride are not characteristics of a believer. And Islam requires one to humble his or herself to what they know to be true. And third, refusing the testimony of faith is disbelief. So we have to accept our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala and all that the worship of Him and Him alone, all that it entails, all that la ilaha illallah entails. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all to accept the haq and be upon the haq. And this brings us to the next testimony or the next condition for the testimony of faith, which is truthfulness. Truthfulness is the fourth condition of the testimony of faith, and it requires sincerity from the one who utters it, and that they are truthful and compliant when they testify to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's oneness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al karim Alif la mim, do people think that they will be left alone because they say we believe and will not be tested? And indeed we tested those who were before them. And Allah will certainly make it known the truth of those who are true. And will certainly make it known the falsehood of those who are liars. Although Allah knows all that before putting them to test. al Khraisi said about this verse, he said that is the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah the Almighty. This is the sunnah of Allah regarding those communities that came before us. Therefore, the one who is truthful in his speech becomes firm when trials and tests occur, similar to a mountain standing vertical and firmly rooted. The liar in his call quickly changes his position and regresses from his original goal from the pressure of tribulations and tests. So trials distinguish the truthful from the liar and the believer from the hypocrite. 
And we've seen this countless times. How many people have put their faith in other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, some in their imams, some in their sheikhs. And when their sheikhs deviated, when their sheikhs went astray, when their imam was proved to be a liar or on falsehood, they fell with their imam because their imam was not with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They did not accept and were not truthful with Allah, but rather their faith and their truthfulness was with their imam with their imam. And how many people have we seen that they held on to a particular madhab or a particular minhaj or methodology in understanding of Islam or a tariqah and they held on to that regardless of what evidence you gave them from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How many people went from extremism to being too easy in the religion, to where they don't even do the wajibat, the obligatory uh, duties. But just yesterday they were so extreme and they were uh, declaring this one to be an innovator and this one to be a disbeliever. But now they don't even practice their own obligatory do deeds. Rather, some have even left the fold of Islam. And we know this from experience. We've experienced this countless times. I know how many individuals that were once at least trying to be in the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. The problem was they didn't have knowledge. They didn't have firmness upon the sunnah and they didn't have firmness on, in Aqidah. But now they're Shia, they're Rafidah. I know people who were even from, you know, they were following and believed they were following the Salaf al Salih. And now they're Rafidah Shia. Now they make takfir of Ahl sunnah. Now they declare even Abu Bakr wa Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhumah to be disbelievers. May Allah protect us from misguidance and dalal. So the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to test us and to see how we hold up during this test. Will you be firmly rooted? Or will you go astray and wash away like the, the leaves uh, or like the foam in the sea or like the leaves in the wind? So trials distinguish the truthful from the liar and the believer from the hypocrite. Truthfulness allows one to taste the fruits of faith. It increases one's love for Allah. And it is an essential component of the testimony of faith. Therefore, one cannot enter Islam without it because lying is a form of hypocrisy. And the hypocrites are in the lowest depths of the hellfire, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fi kitab al -kareem. And of mankind, there are some who say, we believe in Allah in the last day. While in fact, they believe not. They think they are deceiving Allah and those who believe, why they only deceive themselves and perceive not. In their hearts is a disease of doubt and hypocrisy. And Allah has increased their disease. A painful torment is theirs because they used to tell lies. This verse is incredibly powerful for us. It shows us the status of the hypocrites and those people who profess who are not truthful. They profess faith on their tongues, but they do not believe. Their heart, that aspect of iman, which is critical, is not with them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَبِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَمَا هُمْ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ يُخَادِعُونَ اللَّهَ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَمَا يَخْدَعُونَ إِلَّا أَنفُسِهِمْ وَمَا يَشْعُرُونَ فِي خُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٌ فَزَادُهُمْ اللَّهُ مَرَضًا وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ عَلِيمٌ بِمَا كَانُوا يَقْذِبُونَ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them a painful uh, a torment. That is what their, their recompense is for lying, for uttering on their tongue what was not in their heart. وَعِيَادًا بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ This verse also shows us that the hypocrites or that Hypocrisy is the greatest sin and that this sin has to do with their deception. They reject the truth in their hearts while at the same time they testify to the truth with their tongues and their speech. What is apparent from them is truthfulness, but they betray themselves and attempt to deceive Allah when it is futile to do so. Al-Khraisi refers to the sickness the hypocrites have in their hearts as doubtfulness, fickleness, and hypocrisy. Lying and deception are traits that contradict truthfulness. And this is why it actually negates the testimony of faith. 
because the one who testifies falsely disbelieves in what he or she testifies to. The Prophet wasallam said, there does not exist a person who testifies that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah and that Muhammad is his slave and messenger truthfully from his heart except that Allah will prohibit him from the hellfire. This, uh, the scholars use this hadith to show that truthfulness is a condition of the testimony of faith. And at the same time, it negates lying and hypocrisy, which are both blameworthy traits. Some of the lessons we gain from this condition, the meaning the condition of truthfulness as it relates to la ilaha illallah, is that truthfulness negates lying and hypocrisy. Also, one should be truthful in what he or she testifies to. The third thing is that lying negates the testimony of faith. If one testifies falsely. And the fourth thing, hypocrisy may not always be apparent in someone. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-alim. He's all-knowing. And he sees and hears everything in creation. And nothing is hidden from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the, the last thing that we can draw from this, uh, this condition is that one may possess some of the traits of hypocrisy and at the same time not be a, a hypocrite. So if a person, of course, is truthful in their shahada, they're truthful in their faith, but yet they fall into some other acts which illustrate outward hypocrisy, that doesn't mean they're a hypocrite. That just means they have some aspects, some sinfulness and aspects of uh, hypocrisy. The next condition of the testimony of faith is love, which is imperative that we have love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who created us, the one who gives us our rizq, the one who provides for our families, the one who gives us families, the one who gives us victory, the one who, who helps us and, and, and blesses us and gave us this divine purpose, which is to worship Him in Him subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al -kareem, wa ma al wa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes clear for us the purpose of life, that He created us, that I have not created mankind and jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me. That's our purpose. And it within that divine purpose or that divine purpose requires from us love. Allah from His glory and greatness should be loved and revered with the highest reverence. And this is an integral part of worship which requires meekness and humility. Love for Allah is a condition of the testimony of faith. And it involves submitting oneself willingly and in totality to Allah the Almighty and His commands. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَتَّخِذُ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ أَنْدَادًا يُحِبُّونَهُمْ كَحُبِّ اللَّهِ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبٍّ لِلَّهِ وَلَوْ يَرَى الَّذِينَ ظَالِمُوا إِذْ يَرَوْنَ الْعَذَابِ أَنَّ قُوَّةً لِلَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ شَدِيدُ الْعِقَابِ شَدِيدُ شديد الْعَذَابِ And of mankind, there are some who take for worship others besides Allah as rivals to Allah. They love them as they love Allah. But those who believe love Allah more than anything else. If only those who do wrong could see, when they will see the torment that all power belongs to Allah and that Allah is severe in punishment. The scholars of Islam point out that the love or, or that love is a type of worship. And the above verse uh, alludes to this point. Shaykh Muhammad bin Saleh al Uthaymeen, rahimahullah ta'ala, said Complete love for Allah the Almighty and exalting Him includes His divine names and utmost high attributes. Shaykh Saleh bin Fozan said about the above verse So the people who testified uh, to there is. The people who testify that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah love Allah with the most sincere reverence. And the people of polytheism love Him along with others. And that contradicts what is a requisite 
of the testimony of faith. There is no God worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Love is an important condition that one should possess when uttering the testimony of faith. And this requires understanding who Allah the, exa the Exalted is. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, Allah made two signs indicating those who love him. Following the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and jihad for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sake. And that is because the reality of jihad is that it is striving to attain what Allah loves from faith and good deeds and repelling what he hates from disbelief and wickedness and disobedience. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Whoever possesses the following three, uh, three qualities will have the sweetness of faith. That to him Allah and his messenger have become dearer than anything else. That he loves a person strictly for Allah's sake. And that he hates to revert to disbelief as much as he hates to be thrown into the hellfire. وَعِيَاذٍ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ Loving what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and detesting what he subhanahu wa ta'ala detests is a sign of faith and love for Allah and testifying to his monotheism is a condition for someone who wishes to accept the Islamic faith la ilaha illallah also a person who really tastes the sweetness of faith and the monotheism of Islam meaning tawhid hates to return to disbelief. No matter how much sin a person may fall into, they usually retain their belief in monotheism and cannot bear to abandon the Islamic religion. And this is true Iman. And as a example of what some of the things that we've witnessed for those of us who have entered the fold of Islam, by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and by His grace and mercy, He favored us to come to Islam. I've seen many, probably at least 50 to 60% of the people that I know that from my locality who entered the fold of Islam, a large portion of them left the fold of Islam for some of those very above reasons. The lack of sincerity, but especially because of a lack of knowledge. And that's why knowledge is a condition of the testimony of faith. That they didn't have knowledge. They, in, they entered Islam not wholeheartedly. Those outside influences pulled on them until they, the sins had in, in, engulfed them and until many of them had left Islam. Some of the women, they became Muslim because of a, a man, because they wanted to marry so-and-so. And some of the men, the uh, vice versa. And this shows a lack of sincerity. And for you to leave Islam after entering in this great ni'mah, it shows ignorance of really what Islam is. Because even if you follow your desires and follow sin, you can never leave. If you love Allah, you can never leave Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his deen. يا خاطب الحور الحسان وطالبا لوصالهن بجنة الحيوان أسرع وحث السير جهدك إنما مسراك هذا ساعة لزمان